going to be working on these little white flowers tonight. It's been a while since I worked on this painting. Over a week. And uh, yeah, it's been over a week since I worked on this painting. And that's because I was, uh, I was out of town. I was attending the reception of my opening of my solo show in uh, Montreal, Canada. So I haven't been doing these lives for, uh, I don't know, maybe it's been eight or nine days or something along, along those lines. But uh, yeah, happy to be back uh, working on these little white flowers. It was a nice reception I had in Montreal. I'm just going to drop in the white petals here and work on the insides afterwards. So it looks like I might be far along in this painting, but there's still quite a lot of detail to put in. It's uh, really just roughed in the basic colors at this point. Uh, that's, that's kind of the procedures, getting the details after, after everything else. Just putting down basic tone first, basic colors first, worrying about the detail afterwards. Thank you if you uh, had a chance to check out some of my recent uh, TikToks. And uh, another one focusing on the hands. It seems like people are fairly interested in learning how to draw hands. So I think I've planned a few more along those lines. That should be coming up in the next few weeks. Western Australia, hello, welcome. I, uh, I don't know many places in Western Australia. I I've obviously uh, Perth, everyone's heard of Perth, but um, or Kalgoorlie, I don't know if that's considered Western or Central. But, uh, I've not been to Australia. I have a, I have a gallery that represents me from Australia. But uh, that's on the east side. That's in Br near Brisbane. It's in the it's in the Gold Coast. I'm Exoco. Thank you. Welcome.
These will overlap a little bit, and that's totally fine. Hello, Arkansas. not ever been to Arkansas. Uh, I guess the closest I got was Alabama. I'd like to go there one day. What's my favorite painting? Oh, that's such a tough question to to answer. Um, I've had very strong reactions seeing paintings for the first time that I had seen previously in art history books. Um, So, a few that come to mind are um, seeing a, a Francis Bacon painting for the first time in, uh, in London. Seeing a Lucian Freud painting for the first time at the Met in New York. Um, seeing uh, Les Demoiselles d'Avignon uh, 1907 Picasso painting also at the Met in New York for the first time that was incredible because I haven't ever seen it in textbooks seeing a Chuck Close for the first time a Van Gogh, a Rembrandt uh, just all of those paintings that you see in art history books um It was really incredible to see uh, the Massacre of the Innocents by Peter Paul Rubens at the Art Gallery of Ontario in Toronto um, at the time that it was purchased by Ken Thompson uh, in, uh, in the late 2000s, like 2009, 2008, something like that. Uh, it was purchased for $118 million and uh, I was... You know, it's called the, the Lost Rubens. And, uh, he ended up building an entire wing in the library for just to house this painting. Um, that was just that was incredible. There was so so much hype around that painting that when I saw that one for the first time, uh, yeah, it was really incredible, really breathtaking. Um, you know, and it sounds cheesy to say, but seeing the Mona Lisa at the Louvre was also incredible. Yeah, so many. Yeah, bye-bye. If you have any questions about art or our history or colorblindness, uh, please do feel free to drop them in the comments. And I uh, will try my best to answer them. And this particular painting I'm working on here is, is uh, going to a gallery in Australia. 
That's why the uh, lorikeet is an Australian bird and all of the plants here are native Australian plants. Oh, thank you. Hey, thanks for the roses, cash flow. It's uh, much appreciated. Oh, thanks, Flipped. I appreciate that. Yeah, so I, uh, it's a little bit odd for me right now, working in a empty studio. I've uh, just shipped off all my paintings and uh, they, uh, we just had a reception in Montreal, Canada. I have a solo show there right now at uh, Gallery Yoon until the end of January. So I had a, my studio was filling up more and more and more. Um, and then, and then, uh, and then it stopped filling up. And it got emptied as everything got shipped off. Pretty empty now. Anyway, so what what we have next on the uh, on the schedule is uh, these. I have two paintings for my Australia gallery. Kim Ward, hey, how are you doing? I have two paintings for my Australia gallery that I'm working on now so it'll be this one and then another one and then uh, after that I've uh, I have a charity auction that I've agreed to participate in again uh, it's the uh, kids help phone auction put on by the Bank of Montreal in Canada and uh, I participated last year and the uh, piece I donated raised 15% of the uh, entire auction so I've been asked back to donate a piece. Uh, and it's a really good auction because the 100% you know, of the proceeds of the auction go toward Kids Help Phone. And, um, you know, and that's a good thing. As a new father, I, I can appreciate that any childhood crisis is a um, is certainly a, a thing that we should all try to 
help to avoid in whatever way we can. So, a worthy charity, to say the least. And that, uh, that kid's help phone auction will be in April, but I believe the painting that I have to produce is, is by the end of February. So, uh, I'll paint that one live on TikTok as well. Um, so that'll be done. We'll probably start that one in the new year. In January. I have to figure out what to do. Um, last year's Kids Helpline, um, I, uh, I did a, a caterpillar and butterfly theme. And so I thought that was pretty, pretty good for considering it was a kids help phone theme. And, um, yeah, I, I made, um, I made some prints of that one. If you're interested in uh, picking up a print, I do have some prints of, I don't know, I, don't know, I think maybe 35 or so paintings that I've done in my store. You can uh, check those out if you like. If you uh, would like some art hanging on your walls for this holiday season. Um, yeah, I have. I do have some available. 35 prints. I think they started about 20. Well, I know they started at 25 bucks. You're live. I'm a big fan. Hey, thanks so much, Taviant. Thanks for the giraffe dragon. Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad you liked it. Yeah, the, I was doing that dragon and uh, it turned out saying, hey, wait a second. This is exactly the same shape as the, as the uh, giraffe. So I just kind of doubled up on that. Um... I think I'm gonna come back into this bird here and see if I can maybe do something over here. Some darker blues. I'm gonna have to remember to keep my hand out of this out of these white flowers. It's not the end of the world anyway. If you do make a mistake with oil painting, there are two different ways you can correct. You can either wipe it off or you can paint over it if it is dry already. I think oil paint's probably the most forgiving of, uh, of paint. Certainly the least forgiving would be a watercolor. You can't do anything if you make a mistake with the watercolor. Acrylic's pretty forgiving too, but all you can do is paint over it. You can't really wipe it off like you can with watercolor. Or, oh, I'm sorry, like, uh, like you can with oil. So this is not a parrot. This is uh, kind of a cousin, I guess you would say. Of the parrot. This is a, a kind of a bird called a lorikeet. And a lorikeet is native to Australia. Uh, in fact, all of the flora and fauna in this photo are, in this painting, are uh, native to Australia. And that's kind of the whole point. This is a painting for my Australia gallery. I'm adding here right now is ultramarine blue and uh, it's a transparent color which is fine because I, I just want to glaze a little bit of transparent color on top of this blue that's already there which is uh, a blue that has quite a lot of titanium white in it it's called king's blue deep so I'm just glazing this ultramarine blue to apply a glaze is, is to apply a nearly transparent or transparent paint 
evenly on top of a pre-existing color. Yeah, this is all oil. This is an oil painting. And then I'm going to do the same thing here with this. This is all King's, King's Blue Deep with, uh, with some titanium white. So I'm just going to apply some of this ultramarine blue, which is a darker value. Is it watercolor? No, no, it's oil paint. Um, different, different oil paints have different levels of transparency. So ultramarine blue happens to be transparent. Uh, a lot of the blues are actually transparent. Uh, uh, anything with cobalt is usually transparent. Anything with cadmium is usually opaque. But you can, generally speaking, you can think about oil paint in terms of four levels of transparency. Uh, so you'd call it basically transparent, semi-transparent, semi-opaque, and opaque. So it's really important that you know which color is transparent and which color is opaque because they really do act differently. The transparent colors act more like glazes or dyes, and the uh, opaque paints um, have obviously much higher ability to cover. So... You know, for example, titanium white is highly opaque, whereas zinc white is transparent. So if you want to paint smoke, you would use zinc white. Again, it kind of has that ropey transparency. It's really great for smoke. I actually just used it in a painting that, uh, that went into my show. But uh, transparent, because it's, uh, cause zinc white is transparent but titanium white is opaque. So this ultramarine blue has a darker value than the king's blue deep that I'm painting on top of. So I'm able to give this darker value and it's uh, adding a little bit more form that than is already there giving some depth to these feathers yeah yeah oil is is the uh, is the first the ultimate in glazing um you know, the Mona Lisa is over 30 layers of glazed color. Birds are my favorite. Yeah, yeah, they're really fun to paint. Thanks for the tips. Yeah, you're welcome. Great job. Thank you. Video of the hands, amazing. Hate drawing hands. Oh, th thanks, Ben. Um, I'm actually going to be releasing a, a bunch more hand videos this week. Uh, I try to release TikToks every two days, so oh, I just dropped one today, so the next one will be on uh, on Thursday. But um, my Thursday TikTok and my Saturday TikTok are both hand poses. The Thursday one, uh, the pose is like this, and then the uh, the Saturday one, the pose is like this. So. I try to stay on top of my scheduling and I mean I guess it's like everything I do and try to try to be uh, organized oh thanks so much Don that's appreciated uh, I'm gonna start uh, adding some more detail into this area here now so uh, probably some more reds would, would do the trick. So for that red, I'm going to, I have some cadmium red still on my palette from, uh, 
from last week and surprisingly has not dried yet. Well, not so surprisingly, cadmium is one of the slowest pigments to dry. Always have to take that into account. So this, uh, this is a selfie stick. This is a nice tip for painters. Um, so bend that down. And if it's a telescopic lens, and I'll show you how it works, you just add it to um, the top here. I mean, you could hook it on the painting right here if you wanted to as well, but uh, I like to hook it onto this. And then when it's on there, you have this, now there's this bar, and I hold it with my left hand. And I can rest my right hand, my dominant hand, on it. And uh, that greatly improves my ability to steady my hand to, to draw details. So. Just drawing some details in now then. And this is just cadmium red. And the uh, good thing about the lorikeet here is that the colors scheme are all analogous. So here we have orange, red, and yellow. Those are all analogous colors. They're all on the warm side of the color wheel. And then the other part are blues and greens, and those are analogous colors with each other as well. And those are on the cool side of the color wheel. So whenever you have, whenever you're dealing with analogous colors, you don't have to worry too much about those colors turning gray or becoming too desaturated just because um, warms mix well with warms and cools mix well with cools and, uh, I think I think uh, if you are new to art and you're interested in learning color theory your very first lesson really should be in warm and cool that's probably the, one of the most important things to learn about colors is that there's a, there are warm colors and cool colors. And if you mix warm and warm, you can retain the vibrancy, that really, really colorful, vibrant color that you see in some paintings. But if you uh, mix warm and cool colors together, you kill the vibrancy. And, uh, you know, and sometimes you want to kill the vibrancy. Like if you're doing skin tones, for example, you don't want vibrant oranges. You want to kill that, you know, kill the vibrancy by adding the complementary color to oranges, which, you know, depending on the orange you use, is usually a, a, a blue, ultramarine blue, usually. So you kill the vibrancy and then... Uh, and that ends up desaturating the color. And so, depends. A lot of colors in nature are highly desaturated as well. You don't want really saturated colors a lot of the time. Just adding some detail here with this cadmium red. And this is kind of a standard red. Very central. Just call me Jesse. Thank you so much for the finger heart. Blue sky, thank you. How do I make it so realistic? Um, yeah, I just kind of take my time, I guess. I slowly build it up. 
using first start with the larger brushes and then go to smaller brushes you start general and add more and more details as I go along Well, you could you could do it if you wanted to. Um, you know, you have to practice, put in the hours, and uh, yeah, it's certainly possible. I'm not doing anything magical here. It's just I'm just uh, doing what I practice. Love watching your videos about our tips. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I have um, this this week. I already have everything planned. Actually, I have my my art videos planned for the next uh, two or three weeks. Just because that's that's what I do. Um, so this week we have on Thursday. I'm going to release. Uh, I don't know the name of the pose, but like rock fingers. I think we need to do like this. I have a drawing tutorial for how to draw that pose. And then uh, after, then on Saturday, I have a how to draw a fist tutorial. And then into next week, we're doing Christmas themed tutorials. So. That should be fun. How much time has it taken to do this? Um, I think I think we're in about ten hours, something like that, right now. It's hard to say because I went on a holiday. It's the sign of the devil. Uh, well, I think I think what it is is um, it comes from, originally. It's a Sicilian sign that uh, it's kind of um, preventing hexes, but also hexing somebody else, kind of thing. But uh, it's it was picked up by uh, heavy metal bands, and so I think uh, no matter how it started, it's kind of taken on that uh, rock. I'm a you know rocker sign, so it certainly uh, when I use it, it has no uh, affiliation with anything demonic. Um, I'm not a uh, it's not like I'm using, I, I don't even really use that sign. I just, it is just part of a tutorial, but um, you, know, you can always stick your thumb out too. You can always go like this and then that's Hawaiian, right? For I love you. That's Spider-Man. No, you can't do that for Spider-Man. You have to do that. Otherwise, you're shooting webs into the ceiling. Yeah, yeah. This means I love you because it's... It's... Um, I love... And then I think that's a Y sign language when you do that. I'm not sure, but something like that.
It's so peaceful to watch. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to drop the green into the center of these uh, little fl little flowers here. And uh, just to get that out of the way because it's going to, there's a lot more detail to, to put on top of the green afterwards. Oh, thank you. Yeah, if you're uh, interested in uh, any of, seeing any of the other paintings I've done with birds, um, I do have prints available. Um, there's a link in my bio. And um, I also, if you're interested in the paintings, I have a show on right now. Actually, I should have two shows on right now. I have uh, a show in Montreal of paintings, and I have a show on in New York of my uh, digital work. Kind of starting with photographs, but then heavily painting them with uh, in Photoshop and then printing them into limited edition prints. So that's, uh, that's with Treat Gallery New York. Anyway, if you're interested in any of that stuff, there are, there are links in my bio. Oh, thank you. Well, very kind of you to say. Yeah, it's going to be a reasonably reasonably quick uh, session this evening. Just adding this highlighted color to the to these leaves here, trying to pull these leaves apart, creating some form in some and not in others. Brighter colors tend to push forward. Darker colors tend to recede. So you can use that optical fact to your advantage by making things recede and pull forward and that will create the illusion of form and three-dimensionality you will always paint on a two-dimensional surface so that's the whole game as soon as you can figure out how to do that you can paint three-dimensional objects there are other ways to, to try to create that three-dimensionality, and one of them is with chroma. When you decrease the chroma, 
the object tends to recede. When you increase the chroma, or the saturation is another way to say it, objects tend to pull forward. So you can play with those facts. Those are just, uh, just the reality of how we perceive. It's not cultural whatsoever. You take your time, I do that. Crazy watching Bob Ross with brushes, 10 minutes later done. Yeah, they're just different styles. You can you can do that. Bob Ross certainly had a, um, a formula. He had a set palette and he had a certain number of brushes and a certain order to do them in. And, and uh, his paintings had to be planned out meticulously because he was, uh, he was painting li on live TV. So he um he had a he had a really good formula and he stuck to it. He was a good educator. So he did a lot for painting. He brought painting to to the masses, so to speak. He made a lot of people who otherwise think thought that they couldn't paint um, pick up a brush for the first time give it a shot so in that regard I think uh, I think he did a wonderful job oh thanks so much I appreciate it. Thank you for the rose, and thank you for the balloons. Yeah, very much appreciated, both of them. Favorite is Norman Rockwell. Yeah, he was incredible. I'm uh, really glad that he got the recognition that he deserved. It was uh, posthumous, sadly, but uh, the Guggenheim in New York did put on a retrospective of all of his work. So that was really great. And he was recognized for the very talented artist that he is. They had a number of the original Saturday Evening Post uh, covers done by Rockwell uh, in that retrospective. Really uh, fabulous stuff. Do I have any birds? No, I don't. I do not have any birds. Never have had.
where did I learn how to paint? Uh, well, I learned, I did a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree at the University of Saskatchewan. Um, way back in the day. And um, I guess that's where I learned most of it. Um, we They didn't uh, allow us to paint with oil paint, however. We had to uh, restrict our painting to acrylic uh, for purposes they, of the ventilation, preserving the ventilation. So um, I certainly learned all of the other aspects of painting, form and balance, color wheels and so on. But uh, nothing about oil paint. Thank you. You're a beginner artist? Nice. That's an exciting place to be. There's so much to study, so much to learn. Say, so, yeah. try not to get dis uh, disheartened or disappointed if it's not moving as quickly. It's supposed to take time. It's all part of the process. The goal is to learn something from every painting you do. And uh, as long as you're learning something that, well, let's put it this way. If you do a painting and there's something you like, identify that thing you like and hold on to it and try to reproduce it. If there's something you don't like, Try to consider why you don't like it, and then try to avoid that the next time. And when you do that, when you keep the things you like and discard the things you don't, you're going to find that you uh, really improve quite quickly. Am I using acrylic? No, no, this is an oil painting. Happy little bush right there. Yeah, nice uh, Bob Ross reference. Painting's really hard for you. Yeah, it does take a lot of patience. You know, oil painting's really good if you're if you're uh, wanting to practice your patience. Let's put it that way.
do I do photo painting? Um, yeah, I have done. I've done all kinds of painting before, uh, historically. What is my favorite color? Um, right now, I really like a color. Um, I really like the color called dioxazine purple. So the particular brand of that dioxazine purple that I like is by an oil paint manufacturer named Gamblin Paint out of Portland, Oregon. Dioxazine purple is really great. Uh, it's a transparent color, which I generally I, did, I like opaque more than transparent. But uh, dioxazine purple, when mixed with titanium white, creates the most amazing tints. So to tint a painting is to add white to it. But uh, dioxazine purple and plus titanium white is almost a neon purple. Uh, really vibrant result and uh yeah just always a pleasure to look at so i'll say my favorite color for now is dioxazine purple go to draw you sir someday if you're okay you want to draw yeah you can draw me if you like get that away from me <laughs> okay okay that sounds good yeah you can draw me thank you papa bear Yeah, thanks for coming, Work of God 47. So it's going to be a relatively quick one. I'm actually going to have to sign out pretty soon here.
Okay. So I think I'm going to leave it there for the evening. And I just want to thank you all for joining and uh, remind you that I do have prints available of 35 of my paintings. And uh, they start at 25 bucks for uh, prints, which is, uh, you know, I, th I think, pretty accessible. Um, please do check out the link in my bio, uh, or you can go to markliamsmith.com for, uh, for prints, paintings, and photographs. I also have some free stuff on there, some coloring pages, and so on. So uh, thank you all, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.